you had my top 10 worst movies of 2017. Now get ready for my top 10 best movies of 2017. There's, there's not a second camera there, just a single camera guy. Top 10 best movies of 2017. The movies that I actually really, really enjoyed and didn't think were piles of shit. There was more good than bad this year, so this was a hard list to decide. But let's do the um, <coughs> special mentions first. We have Baby Driver, Logan, the Lego Batman movie, The Void, Headshot, Okja, Animal Creation, John Wick Chapter 2, Good Time, Blade Runner 2049, Thor Ragnarok, War for the Planet of the Apes, and Blade of the Immortal. Those were my special mentions and films that I did still really enjoy and that you should still definitely check out. But let's get into the top 10. In at number 10 is Star Wars The Last Jedi. This is a film that has completely split people. And for me, it is a film that I wasn't into it that much at the beginning. Then it did something where I was like, yeah, this is fantastic. This is brilliant. I love everything about this. We have got to this point now where we think that Star Wars has to always be almost the same ideas all the time. And we get annoyed when someone brings in those new ideas, just like Ryan Johnson has with this. He brings in new ideas. It feels a lot more like an indie Star Wars movie, but I bloody love it for that. And that final, final bit of the film with red deserts, salty deserts, where Gareth Edwards appears and does some, some special sexy eyes at another one of the soldiers when he tastes the salt. I want to know their backstory. I want to know their backstory. Gareth Edwards was the, the guy that also directed Rogue One, so he did a cameo in The Last Jedi. That's not even a big part of the film, but that's something that still stood out for me. The Last Jedi for me, there was a, a great continuation with stories, and it had all these great characters brought into it. Um, we had Rose, who is a fantastic character that I absolutely love in this. Um, Finn and Rey with, the, with their characters, there's still a lot of, of, a lot of greatness there. Kylo Ren... It's all, it's all great, and I do really absolutely love this film, and The Last Jedi was a lot of fun. I think it was better than The Force Awakens, in my opinion, because it just feels very different. It feels like the perfect sort of film to have in this franchise, and I'm excited for what they do next, and I am trusting Ryan Johnson with this whole trilogy that he's apparently going to be doing. In at number nine, we have Brigsby Bear, another film with Mark Hamill in it. Brigsby Bear is a very weird thing. Um... There's going to be maybe a few spoilers in this video today. Uh, Brixby Bear is about a man that was abducted as a child and he is made to watch this show, Brixby Bear, in the room that he has been kept in. Um, and then gets out. He gets out, finds out that Brixby Bear isn't a real thing, but he is going to make the Brixby Bear movie. It's a film about filmmaking and discovering new things, discovering friendships, and it's really hilarious as well, very moving, and is a cracking film. I really enjoyed Brixby Bear. It was one of the biggest surprises for me this year, and I just loved so much about it. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It is a very heartwarming film, and just an excellent film altogether. In at number eight, we have The Disaster Artist, another film about filmmaking and making friendships based on the greatest bad movie ever made, um, The Room. And James Franco as Tommy Wiseau is, is brilliant. Uh, Dave Franco is fantastic also. This film was just so much fun. It didn't feel completely like a comedy to me. It felt a lot more serious because there's a lot more serious subjects to this about how people deal with filmmaking when they want to get to their dream. It's just one of the most sort of greatest homages we've ever had and shows that someone made this with true heart and that The Room is a terrible film but it's a film that I love so much and this is showing its love towards that film and that's why I loved The Disaster Artist. In at number seven we have Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. Captain Underpants was fantastic to me, uh, Kevin Hart playing the child in it, um, 
I'm forgetting other characters, but whoever voiced Captain Underpants was fantastic. Also, the voice cast was brilliant. The self-awareness, the silly jokes. I grew up on those books. I loved the books. And when they bring in things like the, the attack of the toilets and those type of things into the film, I was like, this is fantastic. They haven't just been like, we're going to make a Captain Underpants movie, but we're going to bring in new ideas that people don't know about. No, we're going to bring in all the ideas from the original books, like Mr. Poopy Pants and all those type of things. There is poop humour in there, but it's not like really immature stuff. It's like you can laugh at it. As an adult, you can be like, this is ridiculous, but it's also lovely. The film is lovely. The animation is beautiful to look at. The whole thing is so much fun, and I absolutely loved Captain Underpants, the first epic movie, and I hope, I really hope they do do more with this franchise, because this was just so much fun. I had a smile on my face the whole time I was watching it, and that is why it is number seven. In at number six, we have It. I was never a fan, really, of the TV miniseries, but this was just done absolutely brilliantly. I did not plan out this list today properly. I am forgetting who played Pennywise. Let's let's get the uh, let's get it up. Um, I know it's Skarsgård. Um, is it Bill? Is it going to be? Yep, it's Bill Skarsgård. Didn't need to search that up. It was fantastic. I didn't like the miniseries, like I said, but I loved this. It was creepy. It was fun. The kids are f all fantastic. Such brilliant actors that sold the whole, the whole story to me. It was part about sort of the, the story of these kids growing up. Um, coming of age horror in many ways, but was just brilliant and really did creep me out. It had those jump scares in there, but everything was so effective about it. Bill Skarsgård does a fantastic performance as Pennywise and I loved so much about this, and I cannot wait for part two. This is one of the best horrors of this year. In at number five is My Life as a Courgette. Um, My Life as a Courgette is a French film. Um, I watched this with the um, English on it, which still had a, a great um, voice cast on there. And it was just, it's beautiful. It's a film that's about an hour and five minutes long. Um, and about a boy who loses his mother and then has to go into an orphanage. He doesn't really know how to deal with that. He has many anxieties. It deals with very deep subjects and gets very dark for a sort of a kid's animation. It's a PG and this has some very dark subjects in it. So it's for adults as well and deals with this stuff brilliantly. It deals with sort of depression, emotion, with p kids that have been taken to into adoption, uh, into foster and had to had to have parents that were alcoholics and dealt with drugs. It deals with those deep subjects and does it in such a brilliant way with beautiful animation, brilliant voice acting and very funny moments and it's all emotional, it's funny and it's beautiful all around and I loved my life as a courgette so much. In at number four is Spider-Man Homecoming. Now a lot of people say they love Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films and I'm someone that does Love 1 and 2, I was alright with The Amazing Spider-Man, but this for me was perfect Spider-Man. Tom Holland as Spider-Man is fantastic, this was fun, the whole cast was, was just brilliant. It was the Spider-Man movie that I really wanted. There is a point of the film where all this fun stuff is happening, and then all of a sudden this thing happens, they use this really sort of dark music to take you in, you're like, well... I wasn't expecting this moment to happen right now and it takes you off guard and was a big surprise to me and it was a great entry into the Marvel Universe and I bloody loved Spider-Man Homecoming for everything that it did. It was just a fan, fantastic superhero movie, action-packed movie all around and I can't wait to see what else they do with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. In number three we have The Big Sick, which is based on the comedian Kamal Nunjani. I think I've said that name completely wrong, but it's about st that stand-up comedian and his life, uh, how he met his, his wife, um, and what happened. The Big Sick with this is about, he meets his woman, uh, they get on very well, but he has parents that want him to go into arranged marriage, and because of that, bad things happen with the girlfriend and that, and 
she something happens with her and she's in hospital and he's got to find a way to get back with her it was it's so, it's a rom-com in many ways but it's one that is so refreshing and brilliantly done it's funny there's the stand-up comedy aspect to it as well where he's going around he's just trying to do stand-up comedy why all these horrible things are going on in his life and it's such a human film that really took me by surprise and made me very very emotional it's one the most emotional emotional i've been with a film this year the big sick is funny moving and incredible and just fantastic all around and if you've not seen the big sick definitely definitely do check it out it is just a a brilliant brilliant film in at number two we have get out jordan pills get out which was which I'm still annoyed that it's in the comedy and musical at the Golden Globes because this is not a comedy or a musical. They have the one character that brings the comedy to the film, but this is so far from a comedy. This is a film that talks about race issues, gets very dark, is <laughs> very scary, is a s satire on race issues and that. It is a film that is just so brilliantly done and is one of the best horrors, the best horror of this year in my opinion get out is a fantastic film it's so fantastic about all these films but it was a phenomenal film get out is a phenomenal film and i loved every moment of it and deserves to win all the awards not comedy not comedy deserves to win best director and best script and one of the best films of 2017 is like that is number two in a number one is a film that i loved I liked the first film, and then they brought the second one out, and I loved it even more. Paddington 2 is number one, my favourite film of the year. Paddington 2 is beautiful, it is a masterpiece. <laughs> I didn't think I would say that, but Paddington 2 has the most fantastic cast. Luke, can you say any more of the words than fantastic? No. I'm not going to. Paddington 2 is delightful. It is such a moving, emotional, hilarious film. And Paddington is just lovely. I just want to give him I just want to give him a big cuddle. This film has moments that like I wanted to there's a the part in it I was like I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry because this, this I didn't expect this to happen in this film. It's self-aware. It has very very funny moments that I didn't expect to see. Some quite adult moments. Um, a great story. It's exciting, it's lovely, 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 that's one word best to, to, to describe um, Paddington 2. Just Paddington 2 is one of the best films of 20. It's the best film of 2017 for me. This list is top 10 best films of 2017, and that's Paddington 2. And it's one of the best films I've seen in years. Like, it's, it's probably my favourite film of the 2010s. Um, it's just brilliant and everyone is just Hugh Grant is like really really good as the the villain um, and Ben Winshaw when is just the voice of Paddington is brilliant as well uh, a lot of people think that it doesn't go with it but remember we had Colin Firth as voicing Paddington and imagine how that imagine how that would have been that would have been a completely different ballpark that would have been I don't know how that would have been would it have been the same thing Probably not, um, but I'm just Ben Ben Wishaw. Almost, almost got the name right there. But like I said, it's delightful. Paddington Two was delightful. My number one, top ten, top my number one movie of the year. What I'm talking about, messing up everything. This is my top ten best movies of 2017. Movies that you should definitely, definitely check out because all these films are incredible. And the mentions, check them out too. Uh, check them out. Check them out. What are your top 10 best, best movies of 2017? Say in the comments down below. Let's talk about them. These are my favourite videos to make this time this time of year. And I'm, I'm glad to talk about these movies and talk to you about them. Thank you to everyone who subscribed recently. Probably going to see you like for one more video in 2017. But that's all from me today. Thank you very much. And I shall see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye.